Hey guys, I'm here at Tumalo Creek Kayak and Canoe in Bend, Oregon. This is about as pro shop as a paddling shop can get. If ever in the area, you definitely want to stop in. But what I love about it is they have a place down here called Canoe Land, where they feature Winona and North Star canoes. And I was thinking there's a big Canoe Copia show right now going on in Madison, Wisconsin. And I thought I'd do a quick video about some differences between Winona and North Star canoes since they're both here. Let's get into it. Well, right off the bat, the obvious difference is that North Star uses kind of this yellow or green black co-weave aramid fiber, whereas of course the standard kind of gold aramid uh, look that you're used to seeing in Winona. So they have just a different visual appeal. But right off the bat, one of the first differences I wanna talk about is really a design difference between the two boats. Winona's, if you were to flip this Winona upside down and kind of look at the hull like a fish would, you would see that it has a little bit more of a diamond shape and a little bit kind of sharper entry line. And you can see that as we come over here, right there, kind of a sharper entry line and a real diamond shape. So the majority of the volume being more toward the midship there, a real kind of sharper entry line. And if we look here, we see a little more of a bulbous shape where we do still have a sharp entry line, but then it kind of pooches out a little bit quicker. And the design difference there that the two designers is Winona kind of comes across the approach of going through water, you want a sharp, like a knife, a sharper entry line. Um, and then if you look at North Star, what they're doing is trying to limit the wetted surface area as much as possible. So lower surface area, less resistance, sharper entry line, you know, less resistance. So it's just two different schools of thought. And we see this in like uh, airplanes, for example, Boeing uh, has a sharper entry line through the air and Airbus has a little more rounded shape. And it basically it's just kind of two different ways to cut through a medium, in this case, water. So to me, it has a different feel on the water because of that and also responds differently to trim. One of the other big differences that I like to point out are the differences in aluminum trim. If you look at Winona's aluminum trim, they use a one-piece gunnel. And if we go up here to North Stars, there's actually a two-piece where you have an out whale. And then inside of here, you'll see there's actually an in whale. This little piece is kind of an L-shaped and goes inside. And then the aluminum on the outside is the out whale. So probably a little bit heavier uh, trim in the North Star, maybe slightly stiffer. And then on Winona's case, they might have something that's a little bit lighter. Uh, because of that, I think you get a little bit better tension on this trim with North Star along the whole boat, where sometimes when you look down to Winona, because it is a one piece, you see tension a little bit more just where the rivets are. And as you look down the boat, you might see kind of a pulling in and pulling out. But again, their goal being ultimate lightweight is uh, something to point out there that the one piece aluminum might be lighter. So Winona has a air filled float tank in their ends and North Star uses a foam filled tank. This doesn't take up quite as much space to get the buoyancy. In the Winona boat, you're gonna take up a little bit more space to have that air tank and it's just two different ways. Back in the Bell Canoe days, they did use air tanks. Um, I'm understanding that one of the challenges, of course, is if you break it or if this, you were to lose this, then you know water can get in there. Whereas a foam-filled one, obviously water can not get in there, but you, know, you do have an area that's filled with foam, so if you had to do a repair, you, know, you might have to work around that a little bit. Here's an, another design difference. We're looking at a Northwind 16 right here, and this is that classic constant flare, so the wide spot being up here. And the neat thing with that from a North Stars paddler's perspective is that out on the water without gear, you have kind of a, a narrower ride. And then as you load the gear up, the boat gets wider and wider and you get your stability that way. I'm gonna jump down here and look at very popular Aurora from uh, Winona or the Spirit 2. And what you'll notice is the wide spot is about, you know, maybe three to four inches up and then it's kind of straight up the boat. So it might present a little bit more primary feeling stability, but you kind of have one hull. The neat thing when you go to the Northwind 16 is because you have a constant flare, this boat really rolls to the edge. If you want to do edge turns or paddle it solo, a little bit more difficult to do here in the Winona Aurora. 
or Spirit 2. They have other models that are more similar. And we're looking at a Northwind 17. And you can see in the Northwind 17 that about the widest spot. Still a little bit higher, but um, again, constant flare. So this boat's going to edge a little bit better. And again, when it's empty, you have a narrower footprint. And then as you load it, it gets wider. Right here, once you get to that wide spot, you're kind of at maximum width. So it's gonna have that real primary stability feel, probably not quite as easy to edge. Both brands, of course, are handcrafted in the US. North Stars made near Princeton, Minnesota, and Winona, of course, is in Winona, Minnesota, only a couple hours apart, right in the heart of canoe country. Weight-wise, these are gonna be very similar in weight. One of the things that I also point out when you look at this hull here is if you look at the North Star, you're seeing kind of it presenting a curved surface. And so if you have, you know, chop coming from the side or quartering, generally that rounded shape kind of is a little bit smoother rod. Winona's going to get a little bit more depth because again, they have that sharper entry line. So they give volume through depth a little bit more than you're going to see here. And you do present a little bit more of kind of a sidewall that's uh, just a little more straight up and down. Again, because that wider spot is down low, the boat's gonna come straight up. And when you do have quartering wind, you might feel a little bit more of that bang effect of the wind and the waves. We're looking at two of their ultralight layups and you can kind of see how they reinforce that. Again, when you go ultralight and you're using as little fabric, you need to use foam ribs. So that's the classic kind of ultralight Winona ribbed approach with a foam deck. We jump up here to North Star and you're gonna see kind of wider ribs, but not as many. And then of course, still that foam deck, foam core laminated between two layers of Aramid. So just kind of looking at the rib differences. North Star is using a wooden seat drops which can be adjusted a little bit more easily. They've got that rib support underneath. You jump over to Winona, at least in the case of these web seats. Oftentimes you are gonna see Winona's equipped with bucket seats. That is definitely a difference. Bucket seats are not available from North Star, but you can see they're hanging from kind of an aluminum drop, but they do have many seat options. Oftentimes in Winona's you're gonna see sliding seats. I attest that that hull shape is a little more trim sensitive in a Winona in that more oval hull shape that the fish would see in a North Star. So that's just some of the differences that I kind of see. Definitely on the water, they have totally different feels. So I oftentimes think people are shopping between, you know, Winona and North Star because the weight versus price are so very similar. But to me, they feel so different on the water. Uh, it's kind of like almost the difference between like a road bike versus a mountain bike or, you know, something like that. Similar, you know, usage oftentimes, but a different feel. Both awesome boats, you can be proud to own either or paddle either. Ultralight construction, been doing it for many, many years, but a very different feel on the water. We're looking at the Northwind 16 and the Northwind 17 and the Aurora and the Spirit 2. These are commonly compared to in the market. I would think that somebody jumping in the Aurora, the Spirit 2 might feel a little more sense of four-legged chair stability because that wider point is down low. I think someone that's been paddling for a while and starts to get used to that dynamic feel might kind of gravitate toward a North Star. I've had a lot of customers that were sea kayakers or people that even whitewater kayakers that are used to a boat being a little more dynamic underneath them really enjoy that North Star feel. Honestly, that's what happened to me. I, I had been paddling Winona canoes. I grew up 20 miles north of the factory all my childhood. And then I got into a North Star solo and I felt that dynamic hull of not just being flat, and that's what really hooked me is it just felt like a better extension of my body. But again, great boats, either one. Tumlo's got a great selection of them, uh, mostly in tandems here. So if you are interested in an ultralight tandem and you're in the Bend area, come on down to Tumlo and check them out where you can, they'll even put you on the water right out back so you can compare yourself and see the differences. All right, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you on the water soon.